Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Adventures with Lilu. Today, our latest adventure is car camping in my new car camper. We've got a new name for the car, I will be revealing it later on, and this is the first time I've tested out a quick makeshift of the car using bits and bobs from the old car, but also I've got some new products as well. So, join me on today's video and let's go car camping. So let me just explain. Um, today the forecast is um, 30 to 40 mile an hour winds and uh, and rain later on this afternoon and it is uh, it's quite mild but already you can feel the wind is picking up. So I thought instead of going hot tent camping I would have a look at doing a recce in the car camping situation and I'm working out how to lift the seats up which I have done successfully. They literally just just pull up, they were dead easy, just clicked in. So the seats do lie flat, but what I did found, find when I lifted the seat up was this side here, this was full of condensation and this carpet here is all wet. Hmm, so after a bit of investigation, I found that I have a water feature in the boot. So literally I had to lift everything out, including the spare wheel. And um, yeah, there's about an inch of water. So I could put some fish in there as well and make it into a nice uh, water feature for my car camper. I can't work out where the water's coming from, but the car is under warranty. So I have contacted the, the place I bought it from and they're gonna be ringing me tomorrow. Hmm. I have a pond in the back of my car. So in the meantime, I've got my old um, car window blinds. And although the car is obviously, it's got rear tints, quite a dark privacy tint. Um, if I put lights on inside, you're still gonna see me. So, I mean, excuse my scruffy clothes. Uh, this is Sunday wear. Never actually been in the back of the car. <laughs> I've also never lifted the bonnet of the car. So that might be something I need to look at. A little bit annoyed about the whole water feature situation. However, like I say, on the plus note, it's all nice and clean. Even under the seats, it's spotless. It's like this car, it's never had its seats lifted up. Um, and I do know the seats now lie flat. So that's, that's good news, that's positive. So I've just measured the rear window blind and it's about two inches um, too tall. So I'm struggling at the moment because these scissors are rubbish. Oh, okay. To, um, I'm taking basically two inches off the bottom of it. So this is a slightly different day to what I was originally planning, but it is necessary for me to have uh, future adventures to get the car ready because I also want the car as like a backup in case I ever do camp in treacherous conditions that I can quickly run to my car and uh, oh we're getting there and um, sleep in the car if I need to let me show you what I'm doing I mean it's not perfect but I think with some sticky velcro there and sticky velcro there like I used to have that will hold quite nicely with a little bit of tidying up perfect now for the side windows i'm actually not going to bother about those ones for the time being it's just that one there really ta-da okay so it's not perfect um but like i say it's tinted on the outside anyway so it's just to make sure nobody can see where the lights are on um yeah not perfect and it's literally you just push it in the gaps push it in the gaps and it holds itself up there's no need to put any suction cups or anything like that so uh, yeah that's good 
okay, these aren't perfect, but to start with, while I'm testing out the car, um, these will do just fine. I'm not sure what to do about the situation just yet, and I do need to get some sticky Velcro, which I do have somewhere, and then that rear one will work fine. Um, the seats fold flat. Um, so yeah, we're getting there. We might actually get to go away today, so that'll be exciting. If we just do a test run, um, I need to find the curtains, because I've got curtains that go across here that separate the cab. So we need to find them. I know I've got them inside somewhere. So it's tar starting to actually take shape. This is exciting. The storage space in the footwells here I'll be losing for the time being. Stage one complete. And yeah, this is the first time sat in the back of this car, so... Um... Okay guys, so I've been inside, I can't find the Velcro anywhere, but I have found the curtains and other bits and pieces that we can put in the car. Um, it's really windy outside now, there's no way I would be camping in the hot tent tonight. What we're going to do now is we're going to drop this seat down, we're going to try and put the um, Trekology, we're going to use the, the Trekology airbed rather than um, use the foam mattress or the memory foam one that's quite big. I thought I'd just go with the, the Trekology mattress. Um, so I've got my flex tail uh, pump and um, I also have the, the new sleeping bag whoop, that I haven't tested out yet. So I'm gonna be using this one. And I've got a few other bits and pieces that will go in the car as well, but just for starters. Oh, and I've also found the curtains as well. So we'll be putting them up and hopefully not damaging the interior of the car. If you haven't seen these curtains before, they're from Amazon. And these little clips, I've just very gently lifted up the ceiling and popped it on there, tightened it up with this. The only issue with this car is there's not the other part of the seatbelt. Because what I'd do is I'd normally, they've got two little, little ties here and I'd tie them to the seatbelt. Um, but I can't because that's the seatbelt. Um, so I can't, I can't tie it to the side there. It might not be too much of a problem. Also, in the last car, I had a hook to the ceiling like that, which I'm obviously not going to do in this car. I'm not going to ruin the ceiling. Um, I could potentially pop it under there, but I don't want to damage anything. So, but I mean, even then, I mean. <sighs> I don't know how someone's going to look over the top of that anyway. But this is the this is the curtains. Anyway, they are up and um, they create a little bit of privacy. So it's getting rather cosy in here. Next thing to do is to drop the seat down. So I'm going to put the foil beneath the seat and then drop the seat down and then uh, try and manoeuvre myself so I can actually move. So this is where the damp patch is. So I'm just going to put my foil... Um, foil mat down and breathe in as I drop the seat down and then I've got my boot protector here as well I want to try and keep these seats lovely and clean because look how nice they are so I'm going to crawl across to the other side so again as you can see it's quite simple to just unclip the seat I'm just going to unclip this as well for the moment oh, pull the seat forward drop it down and it lies perfectly flat so the boot protector is attached back onto the headrest again. Curtains are up, window blinds are up. Now is the fun, <laughs> the fun of trying to put the bed together um, and seeing. Now I can't lie completely flat with the base of the seats here, um, but that's going to be okay for now. I'm not too worried about that because, um, as I say, I want to keep, I want to keep the car intact at the moment. So. Wow, it is so windy outside. But the next thing we're going to do is use the Flextail air pump uh, to pump up the Trekology mat. Now, you've probably seen this mat many a time in my wild camping trips, and I thought I would use this in the car. It's not going to fit perfect. The length of the car, it's not five foot four like the Skoda. It is slightly shorter, but that's okay. This is just a temporary thing to test it out. So if I can find the whole, if I can find the... Ah, here we are. The hole. Connect the pump somehow. There we go. So it sucks in air from this side and it pumps the mattress up. I'll come back to you in a moment once this is done. Okay, just bring you back now. As you can see, it's pumped up nice and hard. Um, so I'm turning it the other way. 
it is too big it is way too big but oh but you know what i'm gonna test it you watch hopefully it won't burst it on anything let's let's, let's have a little oh. oh well i mean as i say it's not you know what actually I, I can make this work you know my knees are bent but that's okay so this is the brand of the sleeping bag sorry that's the brand of the sleeping bag it is a down sleeping bag it's meant to be four season um it is a lot thinner than the rab one that i have but i haven't actually tested it out yet so we shall see um i think it will be ideal for being in the car though so that's not a problem at all um now as it's a down sleeping bag it needs to just it's been in a compression sack for a while so i'm just going to let it floof up um everything's sliding down because of the because of the uh <laughs> the slope um but that's okay that's fine <laughs> yeah this will definitely work as i say my legs are a little bit bent and i am sliding a little bit down but i am also parked on a bit of a slope as well but as far as comfort wise this could definitely work with the trekology mat okay i've decided to try using the trekology pillow because the elastics go around the back of the sleeping mat so that should stay in place nicely and i'm actually loving this black sleeping bag because it's proper stealthy and it goes with the black interior of the car it's really smart actually so uh, i'm looking forward to trying this out later God, I've just been to McDonald's, I didn't realise until I went to the loo what state I look like. Um, yes, yeah, so I've just been to McDonald's to have a quick um, meal. Um, before I head out to our destination, the idea was I was actually going to go out there and then go to a chippy or something, but as it happens, I got really hungry, needed the loo, so I thought I'd just pull in here on the way. I have been out for the last sort of hour driving about um, for various reasons. But now I am heading to the car camp destination. So we're here um, at this little, little car park by um, a lovely little river walk. It's very, very windy out there. You can feel the car actually moving. Uh, there is a picnic bench. Looks like a bunch of cars are just leaving, probably from fishing for the day, maybe. There's a few benches, there's a bin. It is proper windy though. So um, anyway, I'm gonna show you the car set up before it uh, goes completely dark. It is blowing a hooli out here. Woo! So, um, I'm going to go in the back of the car. Oh, if I can get the door open. Woo. Right, here we are. Let's get in. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't a very... There we go, I'm in. Right, just bear with me one moment. So I don't know whether you can see, but down here I've brought my power station with me um, that is going to actually... Let me just turn it on and I'll show you. Okay, so it's got 68% at the moment, because I do use this one all the time in the house. Um, I am just going to charge my phone, bear with. So to charge the phone, I've just plugged in the USB here and press that button there and you can now see it is charging my phone, which is handy because I've only got about 15% battery left on it. And also what I am going to be using it with is my new mini electric blanket or electric heat pad it's about 30 inches long it's really good and it's got different controls and it's got your normal plug and that's going to plug into the power bank as well so that is what i'm going to be using to stay warm tonight i know it's a bit dark at the moment but until i've got my privacy blinds in i don't want to be um turning any lights on so there's a privacy blind does that one go in this window? No, no, it goes in this window. So we'll put that one in there. 
see if I can make it work. So we'll squash this window blind in here. As I say, I have already got tinted windows, so I know people can't see in at the moment, but once I um once I put a light on inside, <laughs> let's try that again. Once I put a light on inside, I'm still on the cable, um you'll probably be able to see me even through the tints. Um so anyway, I know you can't see me very well, I know that. Let me put my should I put my head torch on. I'll hang that up there. I'll sit in front of it. So, I know I said I couldn't find the Velcro earlier, but I have found the Velcro now. The thing I'm going to do is attach these little Velcro bits to the blind and then to the window. That's the plan. Just added Velcro here and here, and I've managed to stick the window blind in the rear boot. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go outside the car with a light on and see how much you can see inside the car with the lights on. So excuse this red glow at the moment while I get myself sorted. I have this new product that's not even on the shelves yet. Um, I don't know how much you can see, but I will show you when it's daylight. Um, it's called the Prometheus One. And they've sent it to me to review. And it's amazing, actually. It's, um, it is a torch, but it can go on a, a big stick. Um, but it can also join onto a tripod and this tripod is magnetic and it actually can stick to the side of your car which is really useful this apparently is a really good fishing uh, torch not only that but it's got this piece here that inside has its own proper little flame as you can see i'm not going to set it on fire right now but that is like its own little flame torch but the reason I'm getting this out is because it's got this excellent torch I'm just gonna this is gonna be our interior light for this evening and I'm gonna put this on and then um, there's a car just pulled up so I'm just gonna wait until they go past before I actually switch it on properly what they've pulled in for hopefully they're not doggers do you think they're dogging oh god they're gonna be sadly disappointed when they find it's just me in here Although they are sat with the lights on, so let's just turn that one off for a minute. Let's just sit in the dark. So the fact that I've had a red light glowing inside this car probably looks well dodge. It is a lot darker than it appears on camera. But I wonder whether they're sat waiting to do a spot of dogging. Uh, I hope not. I wonder if they can see me in here. I have no idea because I haven't had a chance to... Oh no, they're driving off. One minute. Okay, so this is the Prometheus One. Um, this is just using the basic short tripod. And as I said before, it has got an extendable arm, uh, which attaches on there as well. And it's also got this other one, which is like a flame. So I, I'll obviously show you properly when it's daylight, but at the moment we're just testing this old torch out. So I've angled it like this so it diffuses a little bit off the ceiling but let's go outside the car now and see see what you can see from the outside put the red torch on as well oh i can't even get the door open it's that windy Ugh. jeez Ugh. wow windy. okay just shut that door Ooh, okay so i'm gonna turn the camera around i'm gonna cut turn the camera around now so yeah, I mean, you can see quite well inside, but you have to get quite close up, I mean, from a distance. From a distance, you're not gonna, you're not gonna know there's any, you're not gonna know there's anyone in there from a distance, but if you get close up, obviously you can see in. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm back inside. Oh my God, it is so windy. So the phone is charging up now. I've also got my trusty cool bag here with my snacks in. I bought this from Amazon. It's about 30 inches and it's got the controls here. And I use this at night at home, but I thought, you know what, it's gonna be really good to bring with me car camping when I'm cold. And as I say, I'm testing out this new sleeping bag that's fluffed up quite nicely, actually. Uh, and I like the fact that it's black because that keeps in with the 
the car. So this seat mat thing is going to go inside the sleeping bag, nice and snug. Well, we'll be using that later, so that'd be nice. Okay, so the reason we're here, other than testing out a quick sort of a makeshift car camping situation, um, the reason I'm here is because I wanted to do a video uh, because as I promised before Christmas, I'd run a competition on naming this car and um, there's been loads of suggestions, loads and loads, and the winner, the one that I pick, gets a sun blesser head torch. So I went through my list that everyone had suggested different names, there's so many of them, and I wanted to reveal the chosen name this evening with you. I've just turned my light off again because outside there, Another car's pulled up. So we're just going to sit here with the light off for a moment. Anyway, while we're waiting for those to go away, as you can see, I've got 67% and I have just turned on the electric blanket. So it's on the plug on the side of it and I'm still charging my phone up. So you can see the wattage. Sorry, it keeps going out of focus, but I don't want to put any lights on at the moment. so. You can see the wattage being used there as it's warming up my my bed. I don't know what they're doing, but I don't like it. They've gone. <laughs> They've gone, so I can put my light back on. But in the meantime, I'm so suddenly warm. I've got my heated pad in the sleeping bag. Oh my God, it is, it's a game changer. To say I was thinking of doing a hot tent tonight, I think I made the right decision because this is so cozy and I feel so much safer. One thing has occurred to me though, while I was watching those strange people that parked up next to me, I don't know how to lock myself in this car without setting the alarm off. So I think currently the car is unlocked, which isn't very safe. So I need to do a bit of a Google, but if you already know how to lock yourself in a Ford Focus, if you already car camp in a Ford Focus, then please can you let me know in the comments um, because I knew how to lock Pedro and uh, I don't feel very safe at the moment so I'm gonna have to do a bit of a Google I guess. This car I think is actually wider. I think there's more room in here than there was in Pedro because Pedro was really narrow. Um, so there is more room in this car, about the same sort of headroom. But I'm feeling quite cozy in here. Obviously I've not quite got the length. Oh wow, it is so windy. <laughs> Is rocking that much. I don't like the wind, it scares me. However, I do think that I'll be quite cozy in here tonight, so um, that's the good news. So, I'm gonna have some hot chocolate. It's so windy outside, my goodness. So glad I didn't use the hot tent, I would have been blown away. I have got some milk chocolate rich tea biscuits. I've not had these in ages, but I have three. I think three is a reasonable amount for dessert to go with my hot chocolate. I'll put them back in the cool box. Now the cool box, I haven't bothered putting anything in it to keep it cold tonight. Um, oh, I feel a bit paranoid. It's so comfy though, sat here. More importantly, now is the time to reveal the name of this car. So. I, um, I spent ages copying down all the names that were suggested. There must be about 50 names on here and I've asked family and friends what their choice is off the list. We've all come up with different ones and I've gone round and round. Some really, really good suggestions. I asked my little nephew who's six and he wanted to name it four names. He's got four names. He says he's got his first name, two middle names and his surname. So he thinks the car should have four names. All right, Alex, so yeah. Auntie Lisa's got a new car yeah. and she's got some names for it. So we're going to choose a name and tell me what you think of these names. Tell me which one you like the best. All right, listen. You sit down properly. Listen. Hi. So just three. Snowden. Okay. Snowy. Okay. Bob. Wait, I like four of them. What's your other one then? And Snowflake. So, so you like Snowden, Snowy, Snowflake, and Bob. Are you sure you like Bob? Yeah, it's funny. I got four because I have four names. You do have four names. So this will, so the car can have four names. Okay. However, Alex, 
it's not very practical to have four names for a car. So I have had to look at everyone's suggestions and my family and friends' choice. And I've finally decided, I actually decided to go with my sister's choice, which is Scout. So the new name of this car is Scout. And the reason I named it Scout is because we are going to be scouting about everywhere all over the UK and maybe even further afield in this car we're going to be camping going on adventures and I just thought yeah the name was appropriate yes the car is white I could have gone with something snow related and I nearly did but it was a little bit a little bit obvious so I do like Scout Scout is the new name and to whoever I'll put your name here to whoever suggested the name Scout you are now the winner of one of these, not this one, this is mine, but there's one that's brand new at home, not used. Sun Blesser Head Torch, I will be sending it to you. So drop me a comment in this video, I will be in touch with you and we'll arrange for that to be sent out to you as soon as possible. So thank you. The new name for this car camper is Scout. Anyway, I'm going to finish off my biscuits and my hot chocolate and just chill out tonight and have a really peaceful evening. Morning. So I just thought I would let you know that um, I did actually bail last night. Um, it got so windy and it was rainy, it was proper stormy and it started making me think, I'm not sure whether I should be here. So I pootled off home, took a slow drive. It was so potholy and going down the country lanes in that sort of situation in the pitch black wasn't fun. But I got home safe and I literally just bailed out of the car. I didn't uh, just grab my basic bits that I needed and went inside. So now I've got the fun task of collecting everything up and having a bit of a tidy before I start work again tomorrow. It's lovely and sunny today, a uh, bit windy still, but the storm has definitely passed. But I'm glad, I'm glad I came home. I got to test out the car in its basic raw form and I now know that I need to tweak a few bits, but basically it is a safe, warm, dry little car camper. So it's going to be absolutely fine. Yeah, we can now start planning more adventures. Now, just an update, I got a call from Available Car, who sold the car to me back in December. Nice guy, rang up and asked what the problem was, and I described everything that I described to you. And we've booked the car in to be investigated. They're going to give me a courtesy car, and it is under warranty. So the car is booked in for the 22nd of February, and we're going to take the car up, and they're going to have a proper look at it. So that's that's good. I mean, there's no, there's no urgency to it. I guess the car, I mean, it's probably had this problem for about six years but I want to get it sorted while it's under warranty um so now I've got the fun task of just putting everything away this is the torch that I was using last night by the way um it's got a tripod and this is actually magnetic and can actually stick to your car um but I'll show these products in a later video when you can see them properly I I'm well aware it was really dark last night and the quality of this video is going to be shocking and I do apologize for that as I say I wanted to show you how I do things in its raw form which is why I look like a complete scruff bag because that's what I'm like when I'm slouching about at home or tidying up or whatever. There is no glam on this channel, or <laughs> well, certainly not at the moment. But yeah, so I just want to say thank you for following along if you've made it to the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, comment down below if you have a car camp and what car you've got on, if you've got any hints or tips that you'd like to share with me. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss another adventure with me. And I shall see you on the next video. Bye!